Hi everybody, I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee and we're going to take a look at the uh, new GFS uh, overnight model run. I thought it was a very interesting run for a number of reasons. Uh, okay, first off, let's get the pain out of the way for you, for you cold weather and uh, snow lovers. Of course, here's our big ridge with the record highs, blah, blah, blah. We know all about that. And now that high, of course, moves out. Here comes the trough goes by. We still have a ridge going into the weekend. There's a kind of a split flow here. A very strong storm in the southwest that's going to be coming out. And they're going to get some really in, big snows in some areas uh, in uh, parts of Kansas and Colorado, New Mexico, and so on. Um, now, we're going to move this along. And, of course, a couple of things start to happen. Let me actually let me go back because I want, it, I want you guys to pay attention up here because... Here goes this. There's the big Scandinavian upper high that forms, and it's very strong on this particular run. The day run it wasn't too impressive, but the night run kind of went uh, ape with it. Now, what's interesting to me uh, in a number of respects, and now we're I just want to check to this is a big map, so it's hard for me to do this so you can see the whole thing and see the time. So now we're already out to day nine, okay? But uh, there's a there's troughing here in the east. There's a ridge in the west, and we have a bit of a northwest flow. And there's also uh, systems that are coming around. And there's probably going to be a few systems rotating around this upper low. And you know, I'm thinking, looking at this, given this look, that you got to kind of keep an eye on this. And now, of course, we are. Let me just check that date again. Uh, we're at the just about to New Year's. So it's definitely colder on here as we go into the New Year's. Maybe we finish off the year with a couple of days near normal again, or maybe even a little bit below normal. But when I mentioned a number of times that a pattern could change, and it could change into something that you just you know you still won't like, and it is possible. But as we move along here, you can see how strong this Scandinavian block is, and kind of traps a vortex up uh, from the uh, northernmost Canada here, southeastward, uh, toward Newfoundland is where the troughing is. It's kind of like this. And, and there's indentations. Here's a disturbance that's near Lake Winnipeg. Now, after this period, it, the model's going to do what it's going to do, and every run's going to be a bit different. So it's going to react to the block in different ways. I, I guarantee you the next two runs are going to be somewhat different. Um, in the in the second uh, part of this period, the last six days, because literally, uh, if we were to take this uh, after the trough pulls out, there's a bit of uh, there's not really that much cold air, if any at all. Uh, most of the cold air is going to be more up into Canada and so on. And you have a the subtropical jet here moving weather systems along. But I, I, I'm thinking here that uh, we're seeing. At, at least a change in the overall look. We're not diving deep troughs into the west anymore, and, and that's a good thing uh, for you, those of you wanting to see a pattern switch. Uh, the troughs, uh, the, as you remember, they were diving down here all through the western states, and now they seem to be diving further west on on uh, on all these runs. We've got this blocking going on, so how this ultimately sets up, I have no idea. But I, I got to think that this is. At, at least a little more interesting in the longer term than it was um, a, f a few days ago, even with the prospect of the block. And, and one thing I want to tell you is when forecasters look at these models and, you know, they jump every six hours and say, okay, there's a snowstorm on this run and then the next run it's gone. So, they think in their minds, okay, there's a threat for something on the first one, but not a threat on the second one. And I, I really think that when you forecast, you have to look at some of these and, and, and look at the general flow and use a little imagination. There are a lot of what ifs that come into the equation in, in, into the equation here when you're trying to figure things out in the long term. With this big block here and this vortex and, and disturbances moving along it, the model's not going to be able to see at this point this far in advance, how strong these systems are, or perhaps how strong they aren't. But whenever I see something like this, whenever I see something like this, where I have a, a ridge in the west with, with, with troughing in the east, you have to be a little careful because 
As we get closer to the short range, the model may pick up on a disturbance here that might wind up being a lot stronger than what's being indicated now. So I, I think it's something that we're going to watch. Obviously, we don't have much else to watch considering um, what the weather pattern has been. But at the very least, we can say that these, this pattern where we've had these deep troughs going into the western states and these huge ridges building into the eastern states seems to be coming finally to an end um, after early next week. So we we're going we're gonna to move this along, uh, see what the models do in subsequent runs, of course. I just want to tell you, we are, of course, going into Christmas. Um, I want everybody to have a very Merry Christmas with their, with you, for you and for your families. I'm going to probably slow down a little bit over the next few days. I'll uh, be looking at this and throwing a few posts up, but I may be a little less active because um, this is a busy time for me. Uh, with regards to uh, Christmas time, I, I sing in a church choir. I'm a tenor, so uh, I, I have a lot to do. Anyway, and I'm sure you have a lot to do too. So um, anyhow, we will talk more about this tomorrow and enjoy your Tuesday. Just watch out for the uh, rain that will be moving uh, in and out from time to time today and again on Wednesday, which uh, might be a little more significant.